Good morning, all. Um, so re week 31, we're going to continue on. Um, we're gonna, we have a little bit left of the beef. So like red meat, I mean, well, and pork. So the beef, veal, lamb, um, we're gonna finish up that section and then begin poultry. We're gonna go through that um, today as well. So, <clears throat> Good morning, all. Um, so we're going to continue on with poultry or finish up uh, beef, veal, lamb, that kind of stuff. Um, just a little bit about barbecue. And then we're going to continue on with poultry this week. So we're going to do like half poultry today, finish poultry tomorrow. OK, so um, let me go ahead and share screen. And we'll be get going. Okay, so to continue where we left off, let me go ahead and play from this current slide. Um, last week we ended with, uh, with this about the different types of dry heat cooking. Um, and well, we stopped with storage, I think. So <clears throat> basically for, for cooking types of meat, um, to maximize flavor and tenderness, minim minimize loss of moisture, um, the cooking process needs to break collagen down into gelatin and water. Um, what increased tenderness, loss of moisture. It all bases basic. Uh, it's all basically dependent on what type of meat it is and what muscle it is. Okay, how old the animal is. There's just there's a few variances to it, um, and a lot of times when you go to the grocery store, the butcher just ask them how. They're not all chefs, but they know what kind of muscle it is, they know all about that. So they can tell you like, what's the best way to prepare it um, or just look it up. There's so much stuff on Google right now and YouTube. Um, so what we did last week with the beef tenderloin, that is a naturally extremely tender muscle because that animal doesn't use that muscle like at all. Um, maybe at one point it did, um, you know, when, if there's wild cows, you know, they might've ran more or they might've been chased more. Now they're not. So they don't use certain muscles. So progressively over the years, um, animals stopped using certain muscles because they're farm raised now, like they're not, you know, wild. Um, so we're gonna keep moving on. So roasting, there's dry heat cooking, uh, which would be your roasting, um, pan searing, uh, grilling, broiling, braising, well, braising starts with a, a dry heat and goes to the moist heat. Um, but we're going to go over these parts right here. So, um, cooking roast, and this is all, we've already done a lot of cooking roast. When you guys did your, uh, brisket, that's how we did this. So when you roast something, you sear the meat, um, trim visible fat, but leave some fat on there for the roasting. And you can either marinate, bard, or stuff it, which we'll go over in a second. Um, cooking roast, uncovered, elevated rack, add mirepoix um, during the final hour. So basically when you cook a roast, you want to, you don't want to cover it. You want to like get that dry heat on the meat. So it gets like a nice crust to it. Um, same thing with the vegetables. They'll actually look kind of dried out <clears throat> when you roast them. Um, but what you do is you finish cooking those. You can either like add liquid to it and braise them for, to make like a sauce, um, it just depends on what you're doing and what size you cut your vegetables. But I wanted to play this. This is called barbecue around the world. So when people think of barbecue, they constantly think of, oh, pulled pork barbecue. But barbecue literally means to cook on like an open flame. Um, so I want you guys to see this because it's pretty cool. Barbecue is one of the oldest cooking methods on the planet. Evolving from simply cooking meat over a fire, cultures have created various techniques to grill, roast, and cook their meat to perfection. Let's take a look at how barbecue is done around the world. A popular dish in Chinese cuisine is cha xiao, or Chinese barbecue pork. Cha xiao translates to fork roasted. The meat is placed on an elongated fork and roasted over an open fire. It has a slightly charred and reddish brown color, finished with a sweet but savory flavor. In India, grilling is done inside a clay oven called a tandoor. A tandoor is a cylindrical clay oven that's been used in India for centuries. It burns at a very high heat, exposing the food inside to open flames and hot air, resulting in confection cooking. 
Some excavation sites have found tandoor clay ovens with chicken bones and char marks dating back to 3000 BC. Tandoori chicken is known to be one of India's most popular dishes and comes with sides like naan, cucumber raita, and basmati rice. Ikan bakar is a technique of cooking fish over a bed of charcoal. The procedure varies, but fish is normally split in half, flavored with spices, and placed between two grates that go directly on the grill. Depending on the region, the spices may differ, but can range from sweet to spicy. Yakitori are bite-sized pieces of chicken derived from various parts of the bird, including thigh meat, neck meat, skin, heart, and tails that are all placed on skewers and grilled over charcoal fire. For generations, Mongolians have cooked horhok, which consists of potatoes, carrots, onions, and meat. Horhok is made by placing meat with hot stones in an enclosed container and cooking it on an open fire. The meat can be either goat or mutton, but since mutton is considered a daily staple and goat is more of a delicacy, it's typically goat that's cooked, since horhug is traditionally reserved for festivals or family events with many guests. Depending on the number of people, sometimes even a whole sheep is used. Gooey refers to grilled meat dishes found in Korean cuisine. Grilling is a key cooking component and method in Korea. Traditionally, most tables in a Korean barbecue have a gas or charcoal grill in the middle. Some ingredients come to the table raw, sliced, and prepared to grill. The meat can already be marinated, like the famous bulgogi and galbi beef, or it can be plain and unseasoned. Customers then cook the food according to personal preferences. When cooking, use kitchen scissors to cut the meat into smaller pieces, and don't flip the meat more than once. Piard is a flat stone laid on top of a heat source. Piard meat needs to be sliced very thin because the only part of the meat that will cook is what is in contact with the hot stone. Potatoes and vegetables can also be placed on a piard, along with a variety of dips. Aioli is a popular condiment that's served with piard. Some German cooks use a grill called a Schwenkter, which hangs from a tripod. Typically, the Schwenktermeister keeps it moving by swinging and rotating it from its chains, making it easier to cook large pieces of meat. It results in a smoky, juicy meat. Souvlaki is a popular Greek dish consisting of pieces of meat and vegetables on a skewer. Souvlaki was a popular food among the ancient Greeks. It was even eaten by characters in Homer's writings. Souvlaki can be served in a skewer, in a pita sandwich, or on a dinner plate with fried potatoes. Lechon originated in Spain, but is popular in the Philippines, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and Cuba. It's considered to be the national dish of the Philippines and Puerto Rico. Lechon is the Spanish word for suckling pig. The meat is very tender and is usually roasted until the skin turns crispy. Jerk is common across the Caribbean, but Jamaica is the heart of jerk culture, and it's considered to be the country's national dish. The smokiness and spiciness of jerk come from scotch bonnet chilies, island thyme, and allspice. All of those seasonings cover the meat that's been butterflied in order to expose more of the surface to heat. Mexican barbacoa is traditionally made with goat, sheep, or lamb, but beef and pork can be used as well. The meat is buried in a pit, covered in agave leaves, and slow cooked until it's soft enough to fall off the bone. It can be served in a broth and eaten as a soup or with tortillas, which make for some of the most tender tacos. There are numerous styles of barbecue in the US, and everyone has an opinion on which is best. Ribs, brisket, and pulled pork are some of the favorites. Popular side dishes include salads, baked beans, cornbread, and fruit. The big holidays for barbecuing in the United States are Memorial Day weekend, the start of the summer season, and the 4th of July Independence Day celebration. Argentina devours the third most amount of meat in the world. The asado tradition originated from the gauchos of the early 1800s. Most of the time, the asado is made from beef, but lamb, pork, and mutton are other options. The tradition involves eating the whole animal, with the best pieces of the meat safe for last. Churrasco also started in the 1800s, when gauchos would get together and grow large portions of meat on skewers. Brazilians often serve churrasco with chimichurri, a simple garlicky green sauce that balances the smokiness of the meat. Churrasco can be made at home and at festivals, but can also be ordered at Brazilian steakhouses. At the steakhouses, waiters walk around with skewers to show off the variety of meats to diners. As customers choose their meat, it's sliced off the skewers. Oh. Typically, this barbecue experience is all you can eat, so diners should bring their appetite. Pachamanca involves digging out an earth oven and lining the inside of the pit with hot stones to cook the food. Potatoes, corn, and marinated meats are enclosed in leaves and placed into the oven for a few hours. Pachamanca is normally served with guests sitting on the ground and typically takes place on special occasions and during the harvest time every February and March. Many foods at Australian Barbies can be linked to the country's proximity to Asia. 
Lamb chops, beef steak, sausages, prawns, and lobster are all popular meats you can find at a Barbie. Barbies are recognized as a common method of fundraising for schools and local communities. The earth oven is used in traditional South Pacific cooking, especially on the islands of Fiji, New Zealand, Samoa, and Tahiti. While the cooking method and names differ between islands, cultures throughout the South Pacific commonly use this below-ground barbecue style. It's used in traditional feasts and family dinners alike, and the food is usually cooked in baskets woven from banana leaves. Meals might include breadfruit, yams, fish, pork, and shellfish. The meat is generally marinated, finished with a savory glaze, and topped with tropical fruit. Fries are important in South African culture. It's like a potluck where family and friends bring their own meats or side dishes. Favorite meats found at a braai are steak, sausages, societies, pork, chicken, and lamb chops. Fish and crayfish are more popular in the coastal regions. Braais are so beloved in South Africa that September 24th is considered National Braai Day in the country. The ancient Persian tradition of barbecuing meat kebabs continues today in Iran. Kebab kubideh is made from ground lamb or beef, or a combination of the two, and is bundled with spices and grated onions. In English, kubideh means slamming, referring to the method in which meat is prepared. The kebab kubideh can be found in both restaurants and among street vendors. Shish kebabs are thought to have emerged when soldiers in Turkey skewered and grilled pieces of animals on their swords. Traditionally, it's made with lamb, but there are versions with various kinds of beef, poultry, or fish, and they don't typically contain vegetables. So which type of barbecue do you want to try? Are there any we missed? Let us know in the comments below. All right, so that's just, I love finding these videos. What is this one? Milk from around the world. Oh man, I almost need to save that one. Um, <clears throat> so as you see, there's just tons of different ways to cook those meats um, as far as barbecue goes. And you saw like with the, with the Americans, you know, we have very particular barbecues. I'm actually going to turn that on this is sorry i want to i want to watch that later um and you know just as, in america we think of barbecue as like two different things like barbecue chicken legs you know you know sweet baby raised barbecue sauce on it but barbecue typically means like something cooked over an open fire um and there's so many different types and so many different things on there i've never even heard of but they look delicious barbecue so, is um that's some of the dry heat I'm going to keep going with this dry heat cooking with fat and oil. So you have saute, stir fry, pan fry, deep fry. You saw a lot of that in here. Um, beginning of the year, we, I showed you how I deep fried um, pork butts. So the, the carnitas. Um, so it's just another way to cook. Sauteing. Um, what we did last week when we did our, we didn't saute, I call it more of a pan sear or steak, but we deglazed, um, which is this. So sauteed meat, serve with sauce, prepare while cooking, deglaze pan very da 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 but <clears throat> what that means is you want to get the the juice the fond the uh the caramelization in the pan first and then use a liquid to pull that off so like the little bits that are stuck in the pan that's all the flavor so you want to pull that off and add it incorporate into your your sauce um, importance of sauce contains foods lost flavor like i just said introduces a nude flavor and adds moisture um Oh, flour, if you're doing a sauteed um, chicken breast or some sort, <clears throat> say if you're doing a piccata, um, maybe we'll do one of those the next week, but doing some sort of, uh, you basically dust in flour. Um, we did this once with our, what do we do? Oh, we did the sauteed chicken a couple weeks ago um, with the polenta. So we dusted it in flour, like dredged it, uh, sauteed it, lemon juice and butter. You know, it's a real simple dish. Um, but it helps thicken up the sauce too. Stir fry, you saw that on here. Um, poaching, simmering, boiling, stews, we've done, we've talked about where you, you do your dry heat, then moist heat, where you sear the meat to get that good color on it. And then you um, add some sort of liquid and cook it slowly. Um, marinating helps break down. This is a liquid made of oil, acid, herbs, and spices. Um, breaks down the collagen so basically like it'll start to degrade the the proteins in there um, <clears throat> so it's easier to to cook and it gets more more flavor and it's more tender um, rubs you know we've talked about these before just a, a mixture of spices and herbs you want to put on your meat um, okay so as far as tenderizing goes we haven't done this in class just because um we don't have 
meat mallets for you know 30 people basically what you're doing is you take a piece of meat um, and you strike it with a mallet or some sort of blunt object something with spikes on it and what it does is it it helps break down the protein so if you have a, a piece of chicken like this and imagine the protein are strings and you keep repeatedly hitting it with something with spikes on it or whatever and you're basically just busting you're you're breaking down those proteins and separating them so when it cooks instead of forming one solid mass it'll it it's like cutting this pin in half and once it cooks it's not attached to the other half anymore it's it's loose so it, it ends up more tender um mechanical tenderizing when you score meat grinding it up so making hamburger um, or making sausage, that's a mechanical tenderizing where you're actually chopping it into smaller pieces. Um, chemicals would be powders. Um, a lot of places are using uh, papaya powder because um, it has a natural enzyme in there that breaks down the protein of meat. Um, marinades, like I said, there's different types of marinades. <clears throat> and another way to tenderize is just cook something. So if you braise like a pork shoulder, it's one solid mass and the longer you cook it in the liquid, it starts to fall apart and that's actual cooking tenderization. Um, last, there's this part about barding. We're gonna do that this week. So you add a layer of fat around meat, um, protects and moistens during cooking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a stuffed chicken breast wrapped in bacon. So you guys can understand this concept where the chicken, the bacon's not primarily there just for flavor, but it's the fat that you want with the chicken breast because the chicken breast, once it's stuffed, um, has to be roasted because that internal temperature of the uh, of the cheese that we're going to put in it has to hit 165 as well. But sometimes the chicken meat itself might get overcooked in that situation. So we're going to we're going to bard. We're going to wrap it. And then here's all your different doneness temperatures. OK, so that is the end of pork. Um, what we're going to do, um, I'm going to start Actually, we've been on for about 18 minutes. I'm going to um, open the poultry so you guys can see it. Where'd it go? We're going to open the poultry one so we can just kind of look at it and just get an idea of what it's going to be over. Um, and then we'll continue on with poultry for this week and next week. Um, so with the poultry, let's just get going here. Um, there's a few videos on here that I'm going to show you just because there's a lot to do with chicken and the different types of meat involved. Um, and what this all includes, the U.S. US poultry inspection and quality grades, well, what they grade is chicken, <clears throat> turkey, duck, geese, guinea fowl, and pigeon. Um, quality grades are whole, poultry roast, poultry tenderloins, and poultry parts. And then you'll see this inspection sticker. You should have an inspection sticker on the meat you get from the grocery store. Um, restaurants can't serve anything that's not inspected. Um, and the way they look for this is like, they'll go through the plants and they'll check for good structure and shape, um, free of deformities. So if something like you can't put a smashed chicken in there, like if you see a bruised banged up chicken or the bones are smashed or something that, that means the chicken was not properly handled to butcher. They check the flesh of it, so the skin, to make sure it's not torn. Um, the fat, the, the way it was defeathered, which is, you know, um, where are we at? <clears throat> the way it's defeathered, which, you know, is a, a process they do, which I'll, you know, I need to put a, a video on here of that. Um, but the way it's defeathered is they usually like flash steam it. They don't sit there and pluck every single feather out. But I'll find a video so it shows you guys that. They look for discolorations in the poultry, um, signs of broken and dis disjoined bones, and freezing defects. Or, yeah, freezing defects. So they'll look for freezer burn, um, which actually looks like a really dried out piece where it loses all the moisture in it. You wouldn't think of it, but that's what the freezer burning is. Um, freezers naturally suck out the moisture of things. So if things aren't wrapped properly and sealed, the freezer will basically evacuate all the the liquid from whatever's in the freezer and that's what freezer burn is and then you'll see that with the ice crystals the freezer burn part is it pulls that ice or that liquid from the the product and then it'll freeze back on there you know with whatever cycles going on but that's not good for the the product um 
And then here's some inspection grades. So stamp guidelines, boneless poultry roast, free of bones, cartilage, tendons, visible bruises, blood clots, tenderloin, boneless poultry breast, tendons should not be extend more than one inch beyond the meat tissue. There's just a lot of things. Um, so the grade A is like the prime. Um, use as is, no processing involved. Grade B and C, use and process products. So chop it up, uh, grind it, cut it up. So what they're saying is this chicken looks great as is. You can sell this whole. <clears throat> this chicken might have a bruise on the leg. So you have to cut that leg off and use it for something else. And the rest of this has to be ground up or chopped or um, cooked or used for nuggets, used for breaded chicken tenders, stuff like that. Um, retail products, there's no grade identified. All poultry has to be inspected. Um, there's no grade standards for the neck, wing tips, or giblets because they don't really inspect that. Um, select poultry by class, so age and gender, age effects, tenderness, look, feel, cooking methods. Older birds are less tender, so you want to like braise those or cook them for a longer period, where younger birds you can use for your wings or grilled chicken breast, stuff like that. We'll get into composition and stuff tomorrow, um, but for now, that's where I want to stop with, uh, with, your, with your lesson. So we're going to end there, um, and then we'll catch back up.